In this video, we're going to be talking about engine stuffing boxes. I'll explain to you why we have engine stuffing boxes, what their main parts are, and what the purpose of an engine stuffing box is. Throughout this video, I'm going to say stuffing box rather than engine stuffing box. Keep in mind though, that if you hear the word stuffing box normally, what it's most likely referring to is the type of stuffing box used in a pump. Stuffing boxes in a pump are fitted around the shaft to prevent leakage from inside the pump to the outside space. An engine stuffing box primarily prevents leakage from one space to another, but it has a few other purposes as well. It's important to differentiate between an engine stuffing box and a stuffing box, because if you search for the word stuffing box in the internet, you'll find only the stuffing boxes related to pumps. The one that we're looking at in this video is a engine stuffing box. Now that that's out of the way, let's think about why we have stuffing boxes in the first place. If you've worked with small and medium sized engines, you most likely won't have seen a stuffing box. This is because they're only fitted to certain types of engine, specifically very large types of engine. This engine here is a marine slow speed two stroke diesel engine. I know that's quite a mouthful, but it describes exactly what this type of engine is. It's used in very large ships to propel them through the water. Down here we have a crankcase. This piece here where my mouse is is the crankshaft. And if we go further up here, we have a piston. There are a few other pieces in this engine that you won't see in most types of engine. This is one of them. This piece here is the crosshead. It connects the piston rod, which is this long cylindrical item, with the lower piece, which is the connecting rod, also known as the con rod. In smaller engines, you do not have a crosshead. You'll normally only have a connecting rod that connects from the crankshaft up to the piston. So the big question is, why do we require a crosshead in this type of engine compared to other types of engine? Well, the reason is the bore of the piston, let me just see if I can move the piston down a bit, is quite small compared to the length of the stroke of the engine. You can see the top of the piston is all the way up here. It's got to move all the way down. That's what we refer to as bottom dead center. And from that point onwards, the closest it gets to the crankcase, it's going to move upwards to top dead center. The bore of the piston compared to the length of the stroke is small. In smaller engines, it's larger. Because this bore to stroke ratio is so small, we need to have the crosshead piece in order that the connecting rod, if we had it running from the crankshaft here, let's imagine for a moment it was running from the crankshaft, off the crankshaft to the crank web, and then it's going to run straight up to our piston. If that was to occur in this size engine, then the connecting rod, which runs up from the crank web to the piston, would first be very long, and then second, it would be quite difficult for us to transfer the force from the piston after a controlled explosion in the combustion space all the way down to the crankshaft without experiencing some quite extreme stresses. The piston here travels linearly only up and then back down again. As the piston travels up, we get a controlled explosion, then it moves back down again. The force from the controlled explosion is transferred to the crosshead, and then the crosshead transfers that force to the crankshaft. If we didn't have that arrangement, the stress that would be placed on the crankshaft because of the angle and the length of the connecting rod that we would require would be quite large it would be difficult to manufacture components that could withstand that kind of pressure. We would also require a larger, wider crankcase, which might make the crankcase a little bit uneconomical. To remove these problems, we install a crosshead. The crosshead runs up and down some guides. You can see it going up now, and then back down again. Those guides are lubricated, and we ensure that our piston rod remains in alignment with the cylinder, that is in fact another big benefit of this design, 
so that the piston rings can seal effectively against the cylinder. You can see here the piston rings, they press against the cylinder. There's a thin film of oil between the rings and the cylinder liner. If there's any misalignment, for example, if we had a very large connecting rod, then we wouldn't get a good seal. So there's many reasons to have this design. Another reason to have this design is because it allows us to separate the crankcase indicated within these orange lines now from the scavenge space, which is where our scavenge air flows into the cylinder. You can see we've got the inlet ports. Let's move our piston out of the way. These ports here are to allow scavenge air into the combustion space. The exhaust gases are then forced out of the top of the cylinder through the exhaust gas valve. We don't want scavenge air going into the crankcase, so we will install a stuffing box. Here is our stuffing box. It fits into a space between the crankcase and the scavenge space. So the dividing line would be roughly here, where these orange lines are shown now. Scavenge space above and crankcase below. The piston rod is free to move up and down within the stuffing box. See it just slides up and down. And as it does so, the stuffing box performs quite a few functions. We don't want scavenge air going into the crankcase because we've got lubricating oil in the crankcase. We may have hot components in the crankcase. Remember all of these components, they're moving quite quickly, rotating like that. If there's any friction between the parts, then we're going to generate heat. If this lubricating oil is heated up, we're going to get an oil mist within the crankcase. We may get an ignition source and we may get a fire or explosion. We don't want this fire then to be fed by scavenge air from the scavenge air space. The stuffing box is going to prevent that. It's also going to prevent cylinder oil from entering into the crankcase. We've got a different type of oil that we use for cylinder oil lubrication. It's the oil that will lubricate the piston rings and the cylinder liner and give us that thin film of oil that we need so that we get a good seal between the rings and the liner and also so that we get less friction and thus we're generating less heat. We don't want heat because we might get micro welding between the piston rings and the cylinder liner. Because we're lubricating the space in the cylinder liner, some of that cylinder oil may come down onto the piston rod and what should happen is that the cylinder oil maybe it accumulates in this space here and then it will be drained off. You can see a drain pipe there. So our stuffing box is preventing scavenge air from entering the crankcase. It's preventing cylinder oil entering the crankcase and it's also preventing carbon deposits and debris that may be within the scavenge space or perhaps that may have come from the combustion space. We don't want bits of carbon, bits of dust, bits of dirt going into the crankcase. The stuffing box is going to prevent that as well. On the opposite side though, if we're looking at the crankcase and then we're thinking about what could travel up from the crankcase into the scavenge space, our focus is lubricating oil. Lubricating oil from the crankcase, there's a lot of it splashing around here, coming out of the crosshead, coming out of all the bearings or the gaps between the bearings and things like the crankshaft, the connecting rod and the crosshead. All of that oil is spraying around. Some of it ends up on the lower side of the piston rod. We don't want to carry that oil into the scavenge space because if we do that, we're going to end up with potentially flammable material entering into the scavenge space. Really speaking, there's probably going to be a bit of that around here anyway. The thing to keep in mind though is in the crankcase, you may have a crankcase explosion and then you don't want to feed that crankcase explosion or fire, which might occur after the explosion, with scavenge air. We're preventing that occurring with our stuffing box. Likewise, if we have a scavenge space fire in this area here, we don't want to feed it with lubricating oil from our crankcase because then it's going to be quite difficult to stop the fire. So scavenge space fire is quite a bad thing that can happen in the scavenge space. A crankcase explosion is probably one of the worst things that can happen in a crankcase. Before we take a look at the stuffing box and all of the main parts, it's worth mentioning that this type of engine is referred to as a crosshead type engine. 
or crosshead engine because we've got a crosshead. The normal types of engine, the ones that are the most common, the engine design that most people think about when they think of an engine, those types of engines are called trunk type engines. They don't have a crosshead. Let's now take a look at our stuffing box in a bit more detail. This is the stuffing box. If we take a cross section, we can have a look inside. We've got a piston rod that runs through the middle. This big gray piece where my mouse is. We can actually remove that. And now we can see into the stuffing box. In order to figure out how this works, we need to go into the stuffing box. And I think the best thing to do is probably to work from the top down. At the top, we've got some scraper rings. These are black items here. These are called lamellas. They're manufactured from iron and they're used to scrape off bits of debris and cylinder oil from the piston rod, which prevents it entering the crankcase. Lower down, we've got some bronze pieces. These are ceiling rings. The ceiling rings are there to prevent scavenge air entering the crankcase. So scraper rings further up here and then ceiling rings further down. This is actually one scraper ring. We've got two lamellas, but that's actually one single scraper ring. With the ceiling rings, I've mentioned that they're used to stop scavenge air entering the crankcase. They're also used, potentially, to stop exhaust gases from the combustion space entering the crankcase. If a piston ring is damaged, or maybe a piston head is cracked, or there's some misalignment between the piston rings and the cylinder liner, then exhaust gases, also known as gases of combustion, may flow down into the scavenge space and they could flow into the crankcase but we have ceiling rings within the stuffing box to prevent this. Exhaust gases coming outside of the combustion space when they're not supposed to is not good. If we've got cylinder oil in our scavenge space which we will have a little bit of but if we've got quite a lot those exhaust gases may heat up the cylinder oil and cause it to combust. This causes a scavenge space fire, which we talked about a moment ago. If the exhaust gases are allowed to pass into the crankcase, they may also cause a crankcase explosion. The stuffing box is preventing this. Specifically, the ceiling rings are preventing this. After the ceiling rings, we go further down and we have a series of scraper rings. Here is one set of scraper rings, indicated by these arrows. Here is another set. Here's another set, and here is another set. The scraper rings in the lower part of the stuffing box, they are in the lower section. The ceiling rings are in the mid section, and then the scraper ring at the top is in the upper section. So we've got scraping of cylinder oil and debris occurring at the top of the stuffing box. Then we've got sealing of gases occurring in the middle, stopping scavenge air and potentially exhaust gases from entering the crankcase. And then after that, we've got a series of scraper rings. These are all used to scrape off lubricating oil from the piston rod. Let me just come out of the stuffing box for a moment. We've got the stuffing box housing, which allows us to install the rings and then it holds them in position. You can see the grooves here. Each one of these grooves is manufactured so that it can house one of the rings, whether it be a scraper ring or ceiling ring. And then these rings, let me just install a couple scraper rings there. They slot into those grooves. The scraper rings and ceiling rings, if I hide the stuffing box housing for a moment, we can see there are actually these thin lines. Here is one, here is another, and there is the third. These lines are there because our scraper rings are in three parts. When we assemble the scraper rings, we put them into the housing, but they're not one continuous piece. They're actually segmented into usually two or three pieces. The ceiling rings will be the same. You can actually see the lines much more clearly here. This one has been segmented into four pieces. One, two, three, and four. And even the housing itself is in two pieces. Go to the full view, you can see that as well. We install the housing, we put bolts through here, and we clamp everything together. 
In order to maintain sufficient pressure between the rings and the piston rod, we're going to need to use springs. These are long springs, they hook together, as you can see here. Once the springs are installed, the residual stress from the springs, the compressive force that the spring creates, is going to force these lamellas, the cast iron pieces, against the piston rod. Not too much that we get excessive wear on these cast iron lamellas, but enough that a little bit of oil can lubricate the space between the lamellas and the piston rod. This will reduce friction and wear, whilst at the same time giving us a good seal. So that's the purpose of the garter springs. Likewise, the sealing rings, the same thing happens, but with the sealing rings, they're made from a different material. They're manufactured from bronze, typically. If I come out again of the stuffing box, we're going to need some drains to allow our oil to drain downwards. Those drains are shown here. The oil will drop down back into the crankcase. And likewise, there's a drain between the sealing rings and the lower scraping rings. That allows any cylinder oil that may have passed the sealing rings to drain away as well. We monitor what drains out of the stuffing box because that allows us to see if there's too much cylinder oil draining away, which indicates that the top scraper ring is not functioning properly, most likely because the lamellas have worn away. But we may also get scavenge air being blown out of the drain in which case the sealing rings are not working correctly, most likely because they've worn away over time. When these things occur, we need to plan maintenance of the engine, which means we have to disconnect the piston rod, pull the piston out of the engine, and then the stuffing box comes with piston, and we can take it apart, clean it, change the lamellas, change the worn sealing rings, and do jobs like that, and then put it all back together. Just to recap, we've got the piston, moving up and down through the stuffing box. As the piston moves up, I'm going to go down here just to highlight this, the piston moves up and as it does so, our five lower scraping rings are going to remove as much excess lubricating oil as possible. That lubricating oil is then going to pass through drains, as we've already seen over here, and it will drip back down into the crankcase. When the piston rod moves down, from up here to down here and beyond, the upper scraping ring is going to remove cylinder oil and maybe bits of carbon, bits of dirt, what we refer to as debris. The sealing rings are going to prevent scavenge air reaching the crankcase and potentially exhaust gases. Cylinder oil should not mix with the lubricating oil in the crankcase, the reason being it has different properties. The environment within the combustion space is very different to the environment in the crankcase, the pH value of the cylinder oil will be different to the pH value of the lubricating oil. The environment within the combustion space, if there's any moisture in there, is actually quite corrosive. We definitely don't want to risk any contaminated oil being carried over from the combustion space to the crankcase. For this reason, the oil that's drained out of the stuffing box is treated before we use it again. If you want to use any of the 3D models shown in this video, then head on over to Savory.com. We've got over 400 engineering 3D models that you can use directly through a web browser in AR or VR. If you want to learn more about engineering, we've got over 45 hours of engineering video tutorials and courses at Savory.com. And you can learn about valves, pumps, power stations, electrical transformers, and many other common engineering machines and processes. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you very much for your time.